Hello, everybody. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Welcome to our seminar. And today we have a very special guest, a distinguished professor of University of California, Davis University of California, distinguished professor of mathematics, Albert Solomon Schwarz. Albert Solomon, which is just a I would say, uh, say a legend of Soviet mathematical physics, and I want to say several, some words on him. Uh, I beg your pardon, Albert Solomonich, if I will say something wrong. He was born in Soviet Union, and his parents, uh, can you hear me? Everybody can hear me? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Albert Solomon was in, in uh, his parents were imprisoned yes, in the terrible 1937 year. And as a son of enemy of peoples, he couldn't entered to the Moscow State University, so he entered in Ivano Pedagogical Institute in 1951. And his supervisor there in the university was Professor Vadim Efremovich. He also, uh, also was repressed in that time. And after graduating from Ivano Pedagogical Institute, Albert Solomonovich ended to, as a PhD student to Moscow State University, where his supervisor was the famous topologist Pavel Sergeyevich Alexandrov. And uh, in 1958, he defended, he got his PhD degree and obtained a position in Voronezh University. And very soon, in fact, in 1960, just two years after PhD, he got the second scientific degree in Doctor of Sciences. Uh, I want to say that in Soviet Union, there are two scientific degrees. A doctor of Science more or less corresponds to habilitation in Germany or a little like uh, livre de sense in Brazil, but I would say that it's more high than livre de sense. Livre de sense just if you uh, research, continue your research more or less regularly, you will get after PhD, after some time, uh, livre de sense. But for, to get a doctor of science, uh, a doctor of science, you would not just, you should do something uh, more important, especially in young age. So at that time, probably Albert Solomons was the youngest doctor of science in Soviet Union, I believe, 26 years. So then in 1964, he moved to Moscow Institute of Engineering Physics, physical. Hence, the work there uh, during more than 20 years. At that time, in the 80s, he published famous book, uh, Quantum Field Theory and Topology, and so on. Began uh, one uh, was one of the pioneers in of Morse theory, uh, topological, topological quantum theory, and so on. And in 1989, when after perestroika in Soviet Union, he moved to United States when eventually, uh, well, first world in Princeton and some other, and eventually, as I mentioned, he came to the University of California in Davis. Well, it's uh, difficult to say of all results or talks of Albert Solomonovich, as I mentioned, he was one of the pioneers of Morse theory, topology quantum theory, uh, non-commutative geometry. For instance, the famous AKSZ model in commutative geometry. It's his, uh, the first names of authors, Alexandrov Konsevich, Schwartz, S. Schwartz and Zaborowski. It's just one of the authors. authors. And just, I want to mention, he has more than 14,000 citations of his works and so on. So we are very glad to have him here. 
today. And today, Albert Solomon will speak on some questions on Georgian algebras inspired by quantum theory. Please, you can start, Albert Solomon. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so, as uh, you can understand from the introduction, I am both a mathematician and a theoretical physicist. Uh, and so that's uh, what I will talk about will be a mathematical talk, uh, but uh, so I will uh, say some physical words. But I would like to stress uh, that uh, really uh, you can skip the, all these physical works, uh, works if you do not, uh, if you want to hear about pure mathematics. Uh, so, and really the basis of my talk, uh, it is uh, what I'm called, calling a geometric approach to quantum theory that I have developed recently. And the starting point of this approach is either a bounded convex set, the set of states, or uh, equivalently, you can talk about corresponding convex cone uh, that has the meaning of uh, the set of all non-normalized states. Uh, so, and uh, it appears that from this starting point, uh, you really can uh, uh, develop the whole quantum theory in particular, uh, instead of uh, having an axioms uh, that give you probabilities uh, in usual approach to quantum theory, you can derive them from the basic principles, basing on what is called the coherence that can also be proved here. And particles and quasi-particles are secondary objects. You can define them. Uh, and you can uh, derive uh, the theory of scattering, again, from first principle. And what is uh, interesting for uh, the audience is that the examples of all the stuff come easily from uh, Jordan algebras. And I will talk mostly about this Jordan algebra stuff. Uh, so, uh, so this is, as, as I have said, uh, we are starting with convex cone denoted by C. Uh, then you can consider automorphism of this cone by linear linear maps, by objective linear maps uh, that uh, send this cone into itself. And we fix a subgroup of this automorphism group. It is denoted by curly V. And also we consider endomorphism of the cone. Uh, 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 the endomorphism form a semigroup. And we consider a sub-semigroup of the semigroup. And then you can write down an evolution operator. It corresponds to uh, one parameter family in this group V. And you can down the equation of motion, the sigma over dt uh, is equal to H sigma. And then H is called Hamiltonian, can be called, it's analog of Hamiltonian of usual quantum mechanics. Uh, so, 
And from this data, you can develop quantum theory. But if you have, if you would like to have quantum field theory, uh, you should have not only involution, which corresponds to shift in time, but you should have also spatial translations. Uh, this means really that uh, you should have a commutative regroup of space-time translations. This is embedded in this curly V consisting of automorphism of the core. And the corresponding elements of curly V are denoted by alpha of x tau, where x is special variable and tau is time variable. Uh, so in the relativistic quantum theory, uh, you should also have Lorentz transformations. Together with translations, they form Poincaré group. And this Poincaré group should be a subgroup of the curly V. And to construct a scattering theory, you should impose a very important condition, the condition of asymptotic commutativity, uh, which means uh, that in the case when you are to, you take uh, two elements of V prime and you shift one of them by means of spatial translations and take the commutator with uh, another operator B, with another element B, uh, then uh, you uh, have a small element if uh, x is very large. And we do not compute that after shift, shifting A, you get two operators that almost compute. Uh, so, uh, I will uh, give this more concrete example of this very general theory. And this is a quantum theory in algebraic approach. Uh, the starting point in this case is a unit of associative algebra is involution denoted by star. And so we really, what we really need in this geometric approach, we need a cone. Uh, there are two cones associated with this associative algebra. One of them is a convex envelope of element of the form A star A. And another is the dual cone. Uh, which corresponds to positive linear functionals that are non-negative on elements of A star A. Usually the elements of this dual cone are called states, but for, for, uh, for us states, non-normalized states and elements of the cone, if we can take either original cone C, or the dual cone. Uh, so uh, we have this uh, curly V that can be defined as uh, all in as a group of all automorphisms of A uh, that can be considered also as automorphisms of the cone or of dual cone. So you, you have these objects of geometrics approach appearing to this algebraic approach. 
uh, but probably was what is uh, uh, the most interesting statement for this origins is the relation with Jordan algebras. Also, in the chart, I think that I should not repeat the definition of Jordan algebra here. Uh, uh, the only thing that I would like to uh, repeat is that for every associative algebra, you can define a structure of Jordan algebra on all elements introducing anti-commutator as the operation. And if A is equipped with involution, the same formula specifies a structure of Jordan algebra on the set of self-adjoint elements. And really, uh, Jordan, or better, Jordan uh, was a physicist who invented the structure, uh, thinking that uh, in quantum mechanics, you really work with self-adjoint operators, and uh, you need an operation on this set of self-adjoint elements. This gives you a short algebra. Uh, but what I will uh, consider uh, this, uh, not simply Jordan algebras, but also Jordan algebras which equip this Banach norm, satisfying some relations written here. And this, if this relation are satisfied, we are talking about JB algebras. And what I will uh, talk about today uh, will be, when I will say Jordan algebra, I will mean JB algebra. Uh, so, uh, finite dimensional JB algebras, uh, they coincide with Euclidean Jordan algebras that were classified in searches by uh, Jordan von Neumann and Victor. Uh, uh, and uh, I will uh, say a couple of words of those disclassifications later. Uh, but what, what is important that in every Jordan algebra you can define a cone uh, that is can be defined as convex envelope of all squares. And but in JB algebra you can define simply the cone as the set of all squares. It is uh, uh, so every uh, algebra is has a cone, but also you can consider a dual cone to this cone. Uh, so and really uh, this. The, as I have said, Jordan algebras, some of Jordan algebras, called special Jordan algebras, come with associative algebras, is involution. And in, in this case, the definition of cone that I gave for associative algebras agrees with the definition of cone for Jordan algebras. So, uh, uh, it is possible to give another definition of Jordan algebra. It's called quadratic Jordan algebra. Uh, 
it comes from axiomatizing of operation that I denote by QA in uh, associative algebra, it's set of joint elements of associative algebra. It is given by formula A x A. The A is associative multiplication. Uh, and this, uh, you can write down some axioms uh, for this QA uh, that are equivalent uh, to uh, standard axioms of Jordan algebra for algebras, uh, for unit of algebras. Uh, and in the first definition of Jordan of algebra, you can define <coughs> uh, the separator QA uh, starting with triple product. The triple product is uh, defined uh, here in the last line. And if you have it, then QA of X is triple product of A, X, and A. So, I hope that for most of you, uh, these definitions are very, very uh, familiar. Uh, but uh, the role for this operator QA uh, in our business uh, is based on the remark that QA transform uh, the cone into itself. Uh, and if QA is invert invertible, uh, then the, uh, this is an automorphism of the cone. It can be considered also as an automorphism of the dual cone. So, uh, now I can go back to quantum theory. And I can, uh, so I can uh, take this JB algebra curly B and now I can define the groups, uh, the, the group uh, curly V uh, that uh, I mentioned in definition of uh, uh, this geometric approach. Uh, namely, I define uh, this curly V as the structure group of the algebra B. Uh, and I will not give the standard definition of structure group, but it can be defined as a group generated by invertible operators QA and the other automorphisms of the algebra. And I also can define the semi-group curly V star, curly V prime, as a semi-group generated by all operators QA. There is another way to define this curly V star. You can say that it consists of all structural transformations in the standard terminology. So, uh, and uh, it is well known uh, that a cone of JB algebra is homogeneous. The structure group acts transitively on the interior of the cone.
So, and I would like to formulate uh, uh, the theorem proven by Alfson and Schulz uh, that says that cones of positive functionals of two C star algebras are isomorphic if and only if the corresponding Jordan algebras are isomorphic. So, which means basically that in geometric approach where only cones are relevant, uh, in uh, really uh, in the standard algebraic approach uh, is not reasonable because you really need only a cone. And so if you have, if you would like to work algebraically, you should work with Jordan algebras instead of C star algebras. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, JB algebras that comes from C star algebras are called special, also JC algebras, and all other JB algebras are called exceptional algebras. So now I would like to formulate some uh, theorems of the theory of Jordan algebra uh, that uh, I, that I have strengthened for my uh, for my goals. Uh, there is a theorem. Uh, uh, that uh, says that if a product, a Jordan product of two elements of Jordan algebra is equal to zero, then the commutator of corresponding operator QA is also zero. For special algebras, this is obvious and means that A and B intercommute, then QA and QB commute, simply because QA and QB are quadratic, minus by minus gives plus. Uh, I, I stress this proof a little bit stronger version of the theorem. Uh, that uh, says that if the norm of uh, a and b of a multiplied by b is small, then uh, the norm of the commutator is also small. And the uh, the proof of this theory, uh, it, it is based on the proof that uh, Ivan uh, gave uh, for the statement that I have mentioned. Uh, so, why the statement is interesting for me? Uh, the reason is, uh, that uh, I can apply this in my geometric approach. So I assume uh, that commutatively group, this translation group, X on JB algebra by means of, of uh, structural transformation. And then I can say uh, the following thing. Uh, if shifted element A 
shifted by large trans spatial translation. Multiplied by B small for large X. Then the commutator of shifted Q with QB is also small. Uh, this means uh, that uh, you have asymptotic commutativity in this geometric approach in the sense that I have defined in one of the first slides. So basically, I have a way to prove asymptotic commutativity of quantum field theory in geometric approach. And this is, as I have said, in the case in approach based on uh, associative algebras, uh, you have Jordan multiplication expresses anti commutator. And theta commutator is related to Fermi, to, to fermion in quantum field theory. Uh, so, uh, as I have explained at the very beginning, all physical words can be emitted from my talk. So, but there is also a similar uh, theorem uh, for bosons. It is a kind of generalization of a theorem proved by Wettering that uh, can be formulated in the following way. You consider operators of multiplications by elements of Jordan algebra denoted by LA and LB. If LA if, if L and LB commute, uh, then one says that A and B operator commute. And in this case, one can prove that operator QA and QB commute. Uh, what uh, have I proved is a partial, generaliza a partial generalization, strengthening, better to say, of this statement. I have proved that if LA and LB asymptotically commute and both A and B are positive, then QA and QB also asymptotically commute. And in the framework of geometric approach of, to quantum theory, uh, this uh, theorem is related to bosons. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, stuff is completely general. And if, uh, but we need examples. And first of all, if we have a lot of examples coming from C star algebras, as I have said, C star algebras, you have cones, you can apply all the stuff. You can consider also differential C star algebras. In physics, it is called BRSC approach. You can consider differential Jordan super algebras. Uh, this is uh, crisp day uh, also. Uh, some uh, uh, generalization of algebraic approach that I have considered. 
so and uh, in particular uh, you can consider tensor product of Jordan algebras and differential supercommutative algebras. This will be a, a differential Jordan super algebra. And in this construction, you can use uh, a D algebra or an infinity algebra uh, that uh, specifies a Lie differential supercommutative algebra calculating its cohomology. And uh, physical conjecture is that uh, then all the stuff is related to gauge fields. So uh, you have also uh, something called uh, TKK construction uh, that can be uh, the, for, for Chitz, uh, uh, Cantor, and Kocher. And uh, I will uh, say a couple of words about this construction that probably is also well known uh, in this audience. Uh, in this construction, we can start with graded Lie algebra, assuming that there are, there are only three elements in the direct sum corresponding to gradients minus one, zero, and plus one. Denote them by V minus S and V plus. And then we can define triple product is triple commutators in this Lie algebra. We have two, two triple products, and they specify of structure what is called Jordan pair. But if you fix this middle element B, you obtain a product satisfying axioms of Jordan algebra. It's not necessarily unital, but still axioms uh, satisfy the Jordan axioms. And the, uh, the main remark that I would like to emphasize that if you got unital algebras, uh, they then the cone that do not depend on B, unital algebras corresponding to Jordan pairs, have isomorphic cones. And this means because we are interested really only in cones, I can say that what we need are not Jordan algebras, but Jordan pairs having invertible elements. And this elements uh, of uh, uh, algebra G node, G node or S, uh, uh, they correspond to the Lie algebra elements of the algebra of structure group. Uh, so again, in this TKK, remember that structure group consists of automorphism of the cone. So therefore, in my business, uh, this TKK construction is really very useful. And she is by definition the Lie algebra of the conformal group. Of course, this is not the standard definition, but still the correct one. So, uh, uh, now uh, we can apply this stuff 
uh, in concrete situations. In particular, uh, you can take tensor product of any uh, 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 Lie algebras or of Jordan algebras, uh, this commutative algebra or smooth function of circle, and you obtain uh, something called Jordan loop pairs and Jordan loop algebras can be called this way. And if the algebra G is semi simple, then you can take central extensions and we can get a definition of a fine Jordan pair and the fine Jordan algebra corresponding to, to this uh, Jordan pair. So, uh, so I have listed some constructions. Uh, that probably are related to physics some, in some way. However, I do not know really interesting new constructions that are really important. So the main problem is to find interesting examples of Jordan algebras this action of Poincare group by means of structural transformations. So, what well, does it mean? Interesting examples. And the first requirement is the requirement of asymptotic commutativity. So I, I have some tools uh, to prove asymptotic commutativity. Uh, however, uh, uh, there is a problem with examples. Uh, where this, you have this asymptotic commutativity. Now, you should require the existence of some stationary translation variant states. And it's also easy for, for mathematician to understand. Uh, the something that is much less trivial is the problem of finding non-trivial to, to prove to, to prove that. Uh, you can define scattering of elementary excitation of the states and to prove that scattering is non-trivial. Uh, at the end of my talk, I will explain briefly what does it mean, elementary excitation. So, So, if you are talking about special Jordan algebras, uh, then uh, these are problems that numerous physicists and mathematicians worked in uh, probably in about 50 years already. And still, uh, you have only heuristic considerations or considerations in the framework of perturbation theory. If the station is greater or equal than C. In lower dimensions, you have examples. In Physical dimension three, there are no rigorous examples at all. There are examples with trivial scattering, 
Батера, но экзампту свистно, три велоскай третика. Со, терфор, фор, эксепшену, алжебрас, юолса, шуднат, экспект, that you will have rigorous theory. However, uh, you can still you can expect expect that exceptional Jordan algebras also are very relevant for physics. And there is a conjecture that simple exceptional Jordan algebra called also Albert algebra is related to superstring. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, conjecture is supported by the statement that the Lorentz group is Lorentz group here is S O one nine. The dimension is equal to ten. Space side dimension is equal to ten. For the super string. And, and you can really e easily prove that the Lorentz group is a subgroup of the structure group. Then uh, the uh, next statement is that Poincare group is not a subgroup of a structure group. But still, it is a subgroup of the conformal group. Remember that a G was the uh, was the algebra of the conformal group in my definition. Uh, so, uh, so in this, uh, there is another conjecture that superstring is really related. Not, not simply to Albert algebra, but this is related to a fine algebra, Albert algebra that I have defined in one of slides for any case when you work with uh, semi-simple semi Lie algebras. So, uh, and so, and probably uh, uh, this statements in my and this in my previous slide are something that uh, I would like to. Uh, stress to emphasize as a source of very interesting problems for mathematicians. Uh, remember uh, that the first problem is to find uh, Jordan algebras these actions of Poincaré group satisfying the condition of asymptotic commutativity. And I, seem, and I believe that uh, really it is supposed to uh, maybe uh, you can solve the problem simply of classification of all Jordan algebras, of all JB algebras, this action of Poincaré group. So, uh, the next slide also uh, is uh, a question uh, that I am suggesting 
uh, it's an interesting problem for mathematicians. I would like to make a remark that if L is a Lie algebra, then the corresponding Fox space, the direct sum of all symmetric powers of this Lie algebra, also has a structure of Lie algebra. You have a functor from Lie algebras to Lie algebras can be constructed this way. And I am asking a question. Can one find a similar construction for Jordan algebras? Or if you would like, uh, can one find interesting functors acting in the category of Jordan algebras? So, uh, the next thing, I believe that I still have some time for this stuff, yeah, uh, is uh, about the definition of particle in geometric approach and the theorem that allows to find them in uh, approach using Jordan algebras. So I will start with definition, what I'm calling an elementary space. I will fix a space H as a subspace of real square integral functions on RD multiplied by finite set. And more precisely, I will take H as uh, uh, the space of smooth functions decreasing faster than any power at infinity. And I introduce spatial translations by standard formula, element of X of Rg are denoted by old face x and I shift this x. I denote this spatial translations the standard way and I assume that I have also time translations that are invariant uh, that are commuting with uh, uh, spatial translations. And so the spatial translations then can be written as exponent of skewer joint operator with translation variant kernel. So this is more or less uh, the standard uh, definition of one particle state. And I will say that H is an elementary state space. Now I can define elementary excitation of translation invariant state omega as a quadratic map of H of elementary space into the space of all excitations of omega. And I require that this map should agree with action of spatial and time translations. On the gar by definition, uh, the elements of the cone that can be obtained from omega by means of action of elements of curly V prime. So and now, I can uh, describe a way how to get uh, this elementary excitations that correspond to particle or quasi particles in the uh, in the situation of Jordan algebras. 
I assume again uh, that uh, space time translations act on the structure group of JB algebra, elements of structure group of JB algebra. They also act on the corner, on the dual cone. And I take a linear map of H into B, commuting with space time translations. And what is easily can be proven, this linear map generates uh, elementary excitation uh, with the formula uh, that is written here. Uh, look, uh, I uh, have Q, which is quadratic map, and phi, the linear map of H in F H in B, and then I consider the quadratic map transforming X into Q of phi of Q, this index uh, uh, phi of X. Acting on omega, and this obviously an excitation of omega, because excitations are obtained by action of Q on omega, and it's easy to prove that this is an elementary excitation of omega. So basically, what do I have? It's a, it's a, it's a again a mathematical problem. So I assume uh, that really uh, you already constructed uh, this stuff that I need in physics. You constructed Jordan algebras. This acting of Poincaré, this action of Poincaré group. Then you have proven uh, that you have asymptotic commutativity. And then you can construct uh, elementary excitations using this statement and this element uh, so you are almost done uh, the only thing that you need is to uh, prove that scattering of these elementary excitations is non-trivial. But I have no time to explain what is the mathematical problem that appears here. So I think... Well, you, you can... <laughs> so... Please, please, if you want to... Oh, no, no, that's, uh, <laughs> this requires another half an hour. Uh, uh, but that's, uh, and I did not prepare slides, so that's uh, more or less impossible to, ex to explain this easily. But I believe that uh, uh, my main goal uh, is achieved. I have listed uh, several very clearly formulated mathematical problems uh, that probably are of interest of interest to people in this community. So this then work. Have you finished? <laughs> 
Yeah. Have you finished? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't hear you very well. Any questions? Okay, uh, have you finished? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay, let, thank you very much. Let, thanks. <laughs> now, any questions, comments, please? It seems that I have, I have asked many questions. <laughs> well, these questions you asked, it's uh, you cannot need to think. Yeah. You cannot to answer immediately. Yeah. That's very interesting. Before to start, you have to understand many things, uh, other things. I, I had a small question, if possible. Yeah. I, could you? Yes, of course. Yeah, so there was a very interesting slide where you had SO1N, yeah. the isometry group of 10 dimensional yeah. hyperbolic space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you could say something more about the, in the middle of the slide, you said something about supporting evidence ah yes yes right yeah. if you could say a little bit about this middle paragraph for someone who is coming from hyperbolic geometry and uh, conform you know i'm familiar with uh, your very early work about hyperbolic geometry and coarse maps between them and the conformal geometry of the sphere so i was wondering how if you could say some more about this middle paragraph on the slide. So I, uh, the simple, so really the, uh, this uh, simple exception, Jordan algebra, uh, it is realized in terms of Actonians. Uh, and so really this is, uh, or you could, uh, uh, so in this uh, picture, uh, it, it, it is not realized in terms of, I, I do not know how to realize in terms of hyperbolic geometry. Uh, so it is, uh, uh, basically you can uh, uh, say this, uh, uh, realize this, uh, 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 this Albert algebra. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, three by three Hermitian Actonian matrices. Uh, so it is uh, very easy to see uh, that the group SO8 is a group of automorphisms of Actonians of, 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 of everything here. And so you can uh, uh, write down uh, as, uh, you can say that uh, in terms of SO8, uh, the first line of uh, uh, this uh, uh, three by three matrices uh, is a scalar, an eight dimensional vector, and then eight dimensional spinner. And the second line, uh, so it, it has similar, uh, 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 if you take uh, the first two by two square, you will get 10 dimensional space uh, uh, that can be uh, identified with Minkowski space. Uh, so, uh, what can I uh, the only thing that I can say uh, is that uh, 
the action of uh, uh, SO19 on this square uh, matrix, uh, two by two square matrix, is simply the action of Minkowski space. And uh, uh, then uh, the uh, short column uh, is should be considered as as a spinner of S over nine. Uh, so that's uh, uh, excluding the variable element. I see. Uh, so this is the action S over nine. That uh, the way I can describe. I cannot describe this in the, the geometric way that you want. No, it, it's very helpful, your comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what is, uh, what I would, uh, if you uh, need one more question, uh, that... Uh, yes. Uh, I can ask in this relation. Maybe it's, maybe it's interesting. Uh, so really, uh, uh, you can, uh, when you consider the Salbert algebra, you can decompose it uh, with respect to many actions that you have there. Uh, you can decompose with respect to SO, SO, uh, SO8 action. You can decompose this in terms of F4 action, the uh, automorphism algebra of Albert algebra is, is F4, and the structure group is E6. Uh, so uh, you can work with all this stuff. Uh, but uh, whatever, uh, but the problem that I would like to ask uh, is as follows. Uh, so really, uh, probably the easiest uh, picture arises when you take uh, the composition with respect to SO8. Then you have vector, two spinners, and three scalars. And uh, because and you have reality maps. Uh, in uh, SO8. This reality map uh, allow you uh, to uh, write, write down uh, the product of the Jordan algebra in this term. So it can be written because of reality maps. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's easy. Yes. Uh, but after that, I can ask another question. In uh, Jordan algebra, you can write down uh, uh, the triple product in terms of uh, in terms of uh, SO8. I see. And this is. Uh, Definitely, you can write it down, write it down. And this is easy, easy, an easy problem, but it should be solved. It seems that nobody uh, did this, and this is an easy problem because really uh, you can uh, work this, uh, work out this, uh, all this stuff in terms of F four. Mm -hmm. in terms of exceptional algebra of automorphisms. Uh, you can, uh, and there is a computer program, computer package called V. You can use it to decompose everything in terms of uh, a force first and if, uh, in terms of SO8 lengths second. So this is, this is a solvable problem, uh, and uh, it would be interesting to solve it. I think that it, it could be useful. Thank you.
Okay. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you very much, Albert Solomonovich. Albert Solomonovich, again, very, very, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. I, I hope that uh, my talk uh, will be considered uh, open to sort of problems. I definitely am not, I, I am not an expert in Jordan algebra. Uh, so I hope this expert in Jordan algebra can help me to solve this problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, just an announcement for the next announcement for the next seminar. In a week, we we have talk you have with professor Jacob Mostovoy from Mexico Mexico he will speak on the Chevalier Ellenberg complex for Leibniz and for Sabinian algebras so see you the next Thursday at our seminar thank you again very very much Albert Solomonich very interesting problems so I hope many specialists some well, there is something to think, some new, new direction, I think, I would say. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all for today. Thank all participations. See you in a week.